Now the next thing we want to check is relatedness among individuals. Now this works for both family data as well as for unrelated individuals. In family data, we want to confirm the relationship that's in a pedigree file consistent with marker data, which means that reported relationships are consistent with what we see with geno genotype data. In unrelated individuals, we still want to check that because when we perform analysis, one of the assumptions we have is all the individuals are unrelated and hence independent. But in real life scenario, we see sometimes participants are related and we do not have that information. So it's better always to check relatedness among individuals. And if we have individuals that are related to each other, we can then either perform analysis that takes into account the relatedness, or we can simply omit one of the two individuals which are related. So to check relatedness among samples, there is an option called genome. So minus minus genome will compute IBS and relatedness for all individual pairs. And then it will output some statistic that will give relatedness among those individuals. Now in this particular command, what I'm doing is I'm reading the file then I'm using the same criteria for missingness, minus minus mind 0.05. I'm also using minus minus geno 0.05. Now this will exclude all the SNPs that have more than 5% missingness because I don't want to use SNPs in this IBS calculation that have missingness more than 5%. Also, I'm using a criteria called minus minus MAF. So what this will do is it will exclude all the SNPs that have allele frequency less than 1%. And I'm adding one more criteria, minus minus HWE. So this criteria will exclude all the SNPs that have Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium p-value less than 10 to the minus 5. Now after all this filtering, whatever SNPs and individuals are remaining, Plink will do IBS calculation based on whole genome data and it will write in exome chr22 underscore IBS file. Now, in general, I'm saying genome-wide data. In this particular example, we have only chromosome number 22. So all these IBS calculation will be performed only using SNPs on chromosome 22. This analysis takes long time to compute IBS because it's using information from all the markers. Okay, so after it's finished, let's look at the output file which is dot genome.
Now the reason why it took so long to open this file is it's a long file because we can see here that it does a pairwise IBS calculation. So we have over 1000 individuals. So if we perform pairwise IBS estimation, we have more than million pairs to compute uh, statistic. So you'll see uh, it has individuals FID1, IID1 and FID2, IID2. So this is a pair for which it's computing some statistic. Now, the important one is this pi hat. So pi hat has values from zero to one. Now one being uh, the highest IBS. So only monozygotic twins or an individual with himself can have this pi hat value equal to one. So if you see any value which is one or very close to one, you can assume if it, it can be a same sample or they could be monozygotic twins. And zero means unrelated individuals. Now, if we see values, say close to 0.25 in this case, now that means second degree relative. So this particular pair can be grandparent, grandkids, or uncle, aunts, nephew, niece. So these are definitely second degree relatives. If we see anything that is close to 0.5, that means they are first degree relatives. And like I said before, once you have this information, you have two ways to handle that. One way is to exclude one of the individuals from the pair and then treat rest of the data as unrelated. Or you can analyze data taking into account relationship among individuals. Now, for this particular example, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to remove some individuals, or one individual out of a pair, where I found IBS value greater than 0.5. So I'm going to remove all the individuals which are first degree relatives or more than that. So I'm going to remove them uh, in the final cleanup data set. Now, we also use information of IBS to compute principal components, to capture admixture or stratification in our data set. Now, there are various other tools that can do this too, but if you are staying within Plink, this is the option you can use to compute principal components. And later you can use these principal components in your analysis to control for admixture or stratification. So once you run this, minus minus genome option and get the output file. You can use that output file and then compute principal components by using this command. So in this command, what I'm doing is reading the data and then I'm giving option minus minus read minus genome. So I'm asking Plink to use the file that we created in previous command called exome chr22 underscore ibs dot genome and minus minus cluster does the clustering part and with minus minus mds minus plot option I'm asking Plink to calculate 10 principal components. Now you can use any number of principal components that you want. I'm using 10 in this example. And then I'm writing output file called exome chr22 underscore stratification. So let's run this command. And this should give us 
principal components for our data set that we can use later for adjusting for admixture and stratification. So here is our output file with extension MDS. So you can see here for each individual, we have C1 to C10. These are our principal components. After doing all these quality control checks, what we want to do now is use all these thresholds that we had in mind and use them and create another Plink file that is clean. What I mean by clean is we will get rid of all the individuals based on missingness and get rid of all the SNPs based on, again, missingness, minor allele frequency, Hardy-Wine by equilibrium threshold. And then we will create a subset of data which is clean and then ready to go for further association analysis. And I'm calling that exome chr22 underscore clean. So in this command, the threshold I'm going to use is minus minus M I N D that's missing this by individual as 5% missing this in SNP data as 5% minor relative frequency threshold of 0 0.0025 Hardy one by equilibrium threshold as 10 to the minus 5 and then I'm using minus minus record command as we used in the first command. So this will also convert data into text file. Now one new options I have used in this command is minus minus remove. Now minus minus remove will remove individuals from the output data and from the analysis and I'm providing this text file called remove underscore individuals dot text. So you can list individual IDs in this text file and they will be removed from analysis. So this file looks like this. It doesn't have any headers. So first column is family ID, second column is individual ID. And third column is optional. It's for you as remarks. So basically Plink will remove all these individuals listed in this file. And in the comment column, you can use your own comments of why you want to remove those individuals. And it's completely optional column. So you can just write two columns and it will work the same way. Now I'm particularly removing these individuals because they have another individual who they are related to with IBS value more than 5, 0.5. So these are first degree relatives. And I'm getting rid of uh, the individuals that are first degree relatives to the other people. So after running this command, I should be able to remove all those individuals with first degree relation. I should be able to remove individual based on missingness of data. I should be able to remove all the SNPs based on missingness, minor release frequency and hardy wine. And then Blink will write 
text file, a pad and a map file, which will be clean of individuals and snips. So if you look at log file now, it tells you the 12 individuals removed with the minus minus remove option, 454 markers excluded because of Hardy-Weinberg disequilibrium and 11,494 SNPs failed allele frequency test. And then Plink has created these two output files, .pad and .map, and the names are exome chr22 underscore clean. So these are the files that we are going to use for association analysis, which we'll be discussing in next video. Thank you.